about nanoscience and technology. We have been discussing about physical vapor deposition that is PVD from our previous video where we learnt that there are three main categories of PVD processing like vacuum evaporation, sputter deposition and ion plating among which we already studied about vacuum evaporation in our previous video itself. So in today's video it's time to focus on the second category that is sputter deposition. So without any further delay let's start with our today's learning and know more in detail about sputter deposition which is also known as sputtering. Sputter deposition is the deposition of particles vaporized from a surface by the physical sputtering process. Or just in simple words you can say that sputtering means taking out or scooping out atoms one by one from the surface of the material by bombarding or hitting it with high energy ions. It is widely used a thin film deposition technique. Firstly, let's look at its definition. Sputtering involves vaporizing materials from a solid surface by bombarding a target with high velocity ions of an inert gas which causes ejection of atoms and clusters. Now let's understand this definition. So what happens during sputtering is vaporization of materials from a solid surface. And how we achieve this is by hitting high energy ions on the target which in turn causes ejection or removal of atoms, surface atoms and clusters which are then deposited on the substrates, right? Next, since high pressures hinder transportation of sputtered material, sputter sources such as an iron gun or a halo cathode plasma sputter source are normally used under vacuum. So basically sputtering is carried out in vacuum in order to achieve smooth transportation of sputtered atoms from the target to substrate. Next, positively, negatively as well as neutrally charged clusters are produced. The clusters produced are hot and cooled down by evaporation in flight. Target material may be some alloy, ceramic or compound. Generally, the source to substrate distance is short compared to vacuum deposition. Sputter deposition can be performed by bombarding energetic iron or solid surface at its target in vacuum using an iron gun or low pressure plasma that is pressure less than 5 millitor. In this case as the process is carried out in vacuum the sputtered particles suffer few or no gas collisions in the space between the target and the substrate. Sputtering can also be done in higher plasma pressure that is in pressure range between 5 to 30 millitor. The plasma used in sputtering can be confined near sputtering surface or may fill the region between source and the substrate. So to those who don't know what plasma is, you people can simply understand that plasma is an ionized gas. And what does this ionized means? Ionized means at least one electron is not bound to an atom or, or molecule which in turn leads the conversion of these atoms or molecules into positively charged ions. Got it? In sputter deposition, some inert gas ions like argon, that is Ar+, are incident on a target at high energy. The ions become neutral at the surface due to their energy. Incident ions may get implanted, get bounced back, create collision cascades in target atoms, displace some of the atoms in the target creating vacancies, interstitials and other defects, desorb some adsorbates, create photons while losing energy to target atoms or even sputter out some target atoms, clusters ions and secondary electrons. As you can see here, this picture shows various possibilities that take place during interaction of ion with target. Depending on the energy of ions, ratio of ion mass to that of target atom mass, the ion and target interaction can be a complex phenomena. And as the incident ion hits the target surface, it creates collision cascades in target atoms, create photons, sputter out target atoms or uh, molecules and even secondary electrons or may even get bonds back 
which is this reflected ion and now with this picture i think you people must be clear about mechanism behind sputter deposition right so moving on further let's know about how sputter deposition is carried out and its procedure firstly have a look at this diagram with the help of this diagram let's know the exact sputtering deposition process the deposition is carried out in a high vacuum or ultra high vacuum system so as you can see this is our vacuum chamber where we carry out the sputtering procedure and it is provided with gas introduction facility this system is equipped with uh, two electrodes one of which is a sputter target at cathode and other is a substrate at anode okay so firstly ionic plasma is created then ions bombard the target material at cathode then target atoms are ejected or sputtered from the cathode by energy or momentum transfer these sputtered atoms flow across the chamber and are deposited on the substrates at the anode okay so this is how the exact sputtering procedure takes place and now with this i think you must have clear idea about sputtering procedure talking about sputtering it is also important to understand the concept known as sputter yield sputtering process is characterized by sputter yield it is measure of efficiency of sputtering and the equation for sputter yield is y is equal to 3 alpha by 4 pi square 4 m1 m2 divided by m1 plus m2 square even by eb where even is smaller than 1 kilo electron volt and y is equal to 3 minus 56 alpha z1 z2 by z1 raised to 2 by 3 plus z2 raised to 2 by 3 m1 divided by m1 plus m2 sn e2 by eb for e2 is greater than 1 electron volt where alpha is efficiency of momentum transfer m1 is mass of incident ion m2 is mass of target atom z1 is atomic number of incident ion z2 is atomic number of target atom eb is binding energy of target atom and sn is stopping power this sn is the energy loss per unit length due to nuclear collisions sputter yield for different elements with same incident ion having same energy varies in general this means that if a target consists of two different elements or more then the element with higher sputter yield should get incorporate in larger quantity than others but in fact higher sputter yield elements get depleted fast and other elements also make their contribution in deposition and in this way stoichiometry is achieved in the deposited films sputter deposition can be carried out using direct current that is dc sputtering radio frequency that is rf sputtering and magnetron sputtering now after knowing all these concepts it's time to put some light on its advantages and disadvantages firstly let's read out its advantages elements alloys and compounds can be sputtered and deposited film thickness is easily controlled by fixing operating parameters and simply adjusting the deposition time that means the thin film uh, the thin film or the thickness of the thin film can be easily controlled by just varying the operating parameters or just optimizing the parameters third the sputtering target provide a stable long lived vaporization source fourth in some configurations reactive deposition can be easily accomplished using reactive gaseous species that are activated in plasma fifth the source and substrate can be spaced close together and obviously because of this the sputter deposition chamber can have a small volume now moving on its to uh, moving on to its disadvantages sputtering rates are low compared to those that are achieved in thermal evaporation 
Sputtering targets are often expensive and material use may be poor. That means firstly the targets are expensive and not uh, and it's not the case that in every sputtering uh, procedure the targets are fully utilized and this makes the procedure somewhat expensive. Third, most of the energy incident on the target becomes heat which must be removed. And lastly, some materials like organic solids are easily degraded by ionic bombardment. And now the last part of this technique is its application part. So let's know about where and for what purposes can we actually implement this sputtering technique. First, sputter deposition is specially used to obtain stichometric thin films. Now stichometric means the composition of thin films is as uh, same or the same as the original material. Uh, like uh, the composition is same of the original material as well as the thin films. Okay, Sputtering is also effective in producing non-porous compact films. It is widely used to deposit thin film metallization on the semiconductor material, coatings on architectural glass, reflective coatings on compact discs, magnetic films, dry film lubricants and, decor and decorative coatings. So with this we are done with our today's learning and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did while explaining it to you guys. But before you leave there is my humble request to you to subscribe to our channel so that I can help you understand more such interesting concepts of nanotechnology. Also don't forget to share this video to those who would find it helpful. Okay then, until next time, be happy and keep learning.